friends! In the video of today we are coming to you with a review of two trail running shoes that we have been wearing for the last two years now. These are Kalanji TR Trail and Kalanji Evadict XT7 Trail. They are both great hiking shoes in our opinion and have many similarities between them. That's why we decided to combine the two reviews in one video. We'll see how they differ, look at the general specs of them and share our real on-trail experience and final thoughts and opinion about them. Also we have one old pair of shoes that we've been wearing for the whole year now so that we can compare their durability as well. Let's get into the video! So we'll start by telling you the story how we found the shoes. It was during one of our long hikes when we realized that our old trekking shoes started to apart very badly. As always when we're close to our favorite sports goods store Decathlon, we didn't hesitate to visit it, as it has a wide variety of gear to choose from. And at first we went to the hiking shoes section and tried several options there, but no single model just didn't feel comfortable enough. Then we decided to check out the running shoes section and try our luck there. And this is where we found them. From the first moment we tried them on, we felt like we didn't want to put them off. So light, soft and comfortable it felt. So we've been wearing that particular pair of shoes for the whole year now. And as you can see, we ordered a new pair of shoes for this new summer season. So we're going to see how durable they actually are and how many kilometers they can hold up. And first off, we want to start with the technical specs of it given by manufacturer and some of their features. On the Decathlon store it is said that have a good non-slick grip and lightweight. The Kalanji TR model has 4mm lux and weighs 300 grams in size 8. And the XT7 model has 5mm lux and weighs 325 grams in size 8. So as you can see, the XT7 model has a bit of a better grip, but are a bit heavier in weight. The materials they are made of are basically the same, with the upper part made of polyurethane and polyester mix, and the outer sole made of rubber and EVA ethylene vinyl acetate. They both have an exclusive EVA Colin Sole foam for better cushioning, and there are quite a lot of cushions all around the toe box. On the website it is stated that the both shoes are suitable and are able to adapt for every stride and terrain type thanks to the K-only technology. Both TR and XT7 shoe have a heel to toe drop of 10 mm. By the drop of the shoe, they mean difference in sole between the front for foot and back heel. And it is believed that the shorter the drop, the more natural is the foot movement. Finally, the Decathlon store gives you a guarantee of two years for the shoes and states that they can last up to 1000 km on a different terrain. You can buy these shoes on Decathlon store of your country and they can come in a variety of colors. The price is around 50 euros or 40 pounds for TR model and 70 euros or 50 pounds for the XT7 model. Finally, we are ready to share with you our personal opinion and experience with these shoes after two years of use. Overall, we can say that they are both very lightweight, very soft, you barely feel them on your feet and they don't wrap your feet at all. It almost feels like you're in socks, but with a great sole. The sole has a great ability for shock absorption Talking about the differences these models have, the first thing that comes to mind is of course the thickness of the sole and how big are the lugs. On the TR model the sole is slightly thinner and the lugs are smaller. Also it seems that the number of lugs is bigger on XT7 model. As you can see the picture of the sole on TR is not that deep as on the XT7 model, even though the base of them looks similar. The other thing is the number and thickness of cushions. There is clearly more cushioning inside the two box on the XT7 model than on TR. And for me personally it is a really big deal because I have a really bony feet prone to the formation of calluses. And being honest with you guys, with all of the shoes I wear before this I had some bad painful callosities and already thought that it is inevitable and is a part of hiking. And with these shoes I can have only some rough skin forming after several months of an active hiking. So if you're just like me and you're very demanded to shoes, the XT7 model would be probably the best match for you, as there are slightly less cushions on TR model. Also it is important that the shoes don't have any hard or rigid seams that can rub your feet sometimes too. They both have breathable sock liner that prevents your feet from getting too hot, so the feet get less sweaty and smelly. Also this is what gives the shoes the sensation of incredible softness. And on TR model I feel like it has even more airflow. The XT7 is a bit warmer, but at the same time water gets more easily inside the TR. Talking about waterproofness, they can hold up a little drizzling rain, but if it will continue to rain the whole day, your feet will get wet, of course. 
and when you have to cross over the waterfalls and rivers, they can get easily wet too. But because they have the thick soles, most of the times it saves you. So their level of waterproofness is very low compared to the hiking boots, for example. But as for us, the comfort of hiking is the top priority, we accept it. Also, if it's summer and the weather is sunny, they will dry up very quickly. And this is a nice feature of them, we think. So to us, they have a nice balance between breathability and warmth. And if it gets cold, for example, your feet won't be freezing either. We found that the foot support is nice for the both models. So even though it is soft, your feet sit tightly inside the two box and are fully supported. The right comfort when we're hiking is great too. You feel just enough of the trail and barely feel small little rocks or branches, which contributes to better comfort on our opinion too. The soles are flexible enough so that it is easy to walk and to walk fast if necessary. And when you first put them on, you feel like you could easily run right away. But it's no surprise, of course, for the trail running shoes. We didn't feel any problems with them on the slippery surfaces. In fact, we felt like they are made for them. Rocky, muddy and slippery terrains. When you're walking in them on the pavement, it feels weird at first. And even there is a strange feeling that they even prevent you from walking, especially if you have a heavy backpack. It is all happens because of the grip and lugs they have. And we feel like for the pavement, you can choose less protected shoes. But for the mountainous and rocky terrain, where we hike a lot, it is just perfect. Another thing worth separate mention is the lace pocket in the tongue, that have both of the shoes. It is one of the best genius ideas, we think, because there were countless times when we suffered from the laces on time, in the most inappropriate situations. And when you're hiking downhill with your backpack, for example, running fast from the storm, this is the last thing you want to happen. Also, I forgot to mention that my XT7 model in this color is actually stated as a man model, but I personally, when trying them on, didn't find any difference between men and women model at all except for the color. And because I didn't want to take a light or pink color, I went with the blue-gray one. So if you have the big size of the feet like I do, you can perfectly take the man model. In regards to the sizes, we usually take one size bigger than your real size, because we found that it contributes to better comfort when your feet doesn't sit too tight inside and prevents rubbing of your feet. So now we think it's time to have a look at how durable they are and what happens to them after one year of active hiking. As you can see, they're holding up not too bad. There is still no actual holes in them and you can see where it kind of starts to tear in the bedding of the shoe, of course, and inside the two box, the cushions are wearing out too. The insoles are getting a bit wore down as well. So this is the look they get after a year of hiking. It's important to keep in mind that they will wear down much quicker. If you're hiking with a backpack and a heavier backpack, the quicker it will happen. And we use them half time with a backpack and half time going lightweight this year. We still think they are holding up pretty good and we still plan on wearing them, going for short local hikes. So concluding everything said above, we can tell you that both of the models are great in their kind, they both have good grip, lightweight, durable soft materials and ergonomical shape adaptable to any feet and comfortable ride. They have more similarities than differences and we encourage you to try them on yourself if possible to decide which pair suits you more. And this was all the information we wanted to share with you today. You can find the links to these shoes in the description to check them out. Also let us know in the comment section below what type of shoes you prefer for hiking and what works best for you. Check out our other gear reviews that we have on our channel and feel free to subscribe if you found it useful for you as we plan to do many more similar reviews in the future. We say goodbye for now and until next time. Bye guys!